Let's look at our simple protection circuit again. In order to identify the components, we have had to write the names of the devices on this diagram. An easier way would be to use a standard code or numbering scheme. This is especially important when we come to complex diagrams like this. Well, it just so happens that the American National Standards Institute, in collaboration with the IEEE, have provided a standardized list of device function numbers. These are used throughout North America and indeed in many other parts of the world. The list is quite extensive, numbering from 1 to 94. For example, quickly running your eye down the list, we find a master contactor, synchronous speed device, distance relay, field circuit breaker, AC circuit breaker, ground detector relay, rheostat, frequency relay, line switch, and so on, all with their respective numbers. The circuit breaker is represented by number 52, so we can place this into our elementary diagram. And supposing the protection relay is an AC directional overcurrent relay, this would be device number 67. In addition to device numbers, a list of abbreviated letters are also provided. And here we can see just at random that A is an abbreviation for alarm, CS represents a control switch or contactor switch, G indicates ground or a generator, N stands for neutral, TC for trip coil, and so on. Now, there is no need for you to remember all of these abbreviations or device numbers. A list is included in your workbook. But as you probably know from experience, you soon get accustomed to certain numbers, especially those referring to protective devices. Every time you look at a schematic and see the number 87, you know that this refers to a differential protection relay. In this case, differential protection across the primary and secondary of a transformer. What else does the diagram tell us? Well, we can see that the primary is delta connected and the secondary is Y grounded through a resistance. The circuit breakers are represented by 52P primary and 52S secondary. What do these other device numbers represent? Looking up our reference list, we find that the transformer itself is equipped with a thermal relay, 49, and a gas pressure relay, 63. This is a commonly used symbol for a CT, but please make sure you are familiar with your own company standards. This CT is installed in the neutral to ground connection measuring ground current. It feeds time over current relays, 51G. Another time over current relay, 51, is installed on the secondary output before the breaker. And what is this on the primary, device number 50? An instantaneous over current relay. Well now, before you get too involved in this circuit, remember, our objective here is not to discuss the settings and coordination of these relays, but rather to get ourselves thoroughly familiar with using electrical diagrams. Now, I know many of you are doing this every day, but not everybody is so fortunate, so please stick with it. Here is another simple protection diagram. A generator connected directly to a bus through circuit breaker 52G. You can already recognize some of these device numbers. 51G is a time over current relay in the neutral to ground. 87G, a differential relay across the generator. What is this 46? A negative phase sequence relay. 51V is a voltage restrained time over current relay fed by the CT in the generator output and a voltage transformer which also feeds a directional power relay, 32, and a loss of field relay, 40. 
In studying these diagrams, it is essential to note the location of the source of input to each device. That is, the CTs and the VTs. Of course, here we are looking at a one-line diagram. Here is part of a typical three-line diagram showing more detailed connections. Another type of diagram that you must be completely familiar with is the control circuit schematic. As we've already mentioned, circuit breaker components may be physically far apart. The closing and tripping coils are located adjacent to the breaker. The manual switching contact considerable distance on the control panel. The protection relay contacts inside the relay may be in yet another location. However, from an electrical point of view, the breaker control circuit looks like this. The DC positive and negative may be drawn horizontally or vertically. It really makes no difference. You soon get used to working through the circuit to determine the sequence of events. Look at the closing circuit of this breaker. To energize the closing coil, the circuit must be completed by closing one or more of these pairs of contacts. This symbol indicates an open pair of contacts. Do not confuse this with the symbol for a capacitor, which looks like this. Now a closed pair of contacts is shown by this symbol, and indeed if they are closed under normal operating conditions, the letters NC may be added. Similarly, NO means normally open contacts. Conventionally, the diagram is shown with the contacts in the at rest condition. That is, the tripping and closing circuits are de-energized. The circuit breaker is open. You would think that to close the breaker, it would be sufficient to close any pair of the manual switching contacts. In this installation, we have local and remote operation. But look, there are other contacts in series with the closing coil, and these are known as permissive contacts. For example, this pair will only close when there is adequate pneumatic pressure available to operate the breaker mechanism. This pair of permissive contacts are only closed when a synchronizing relay determines that conditions are correct for closing. And yet another pair only close when there is no remote inter-tripping signal on the system. I'm sure you can think of a lot more permissive conditions. Once all of these permissive conditions are met and all contacts closed, the breaker will close when you operate one of the closing switches. On most breakers, once closed, both the closing and tripping circuits remain de-energized as the mechanism is mechanically latched in. How is this achieved? When the breaker is firmly closed, it mechanically actuates auxiliary contacts in the control circuit. It opens the auxiliary contacts here, de-energizing the closing circuit. At the same time, it will close these auxiliary contacts in the tripping circuit, so enabling this circuit to operate when required. To trip the breaker open, the tripping circuit must be energized. In the case of a tripping circuit, instead of permissive contacts in series, we'll find several pairs of contacts in parallel. Look at these tripping contacts. Overcurrent relay, manual switching, differential relay, remote intertrip. Closing any one of these pairs will energize the tripping circuit and open the circuit breaker. Often these tripping contacts are provided with seal-in circuits, as we discussed in the previous segment. We have been looking at a relatively simple control schematic. In practice, these diagrams can become quite complex. You'll find it most challenging to get hold of a set of control diagrams on your own job and work through them. In fact, I'll leave you with that as an exercise. Let's take a break.
get zone protection. Please switch off the tape and go through this material in your workbook.